Watch you guys, got another video here for you. This one's on how to create your own Windows 7 Universal Installer Disk or USB Drive. Now the tools you're going to need to do this job are Windows 7 32-bit and 64-bit versions, disks, i.e. Uh, premium or um, ultimate or anything like that, professional, it doesn't really matter what flavour you've got as long as you've got Windows 7 32-bit and 64-bit versions. Also you can use ISO images, retailed ISO images which you can download, trial versions. It doesn't really matter what flavour it is, again it can be either professional, ultimate, it doesn't really matter. Now from those two discs we're going to create our own universal disc which will look something like that on the screen. Now this is going to help um, technicians to be able to install any version with just one CD. Ok let's get started anyway. We're going to also need X image as a little program what we're going to do to uh, compress and export them into one CD and that will come more clearer later on in the video. Ok so the first thing I want to do is go to my C root directory and create two folders. The first one is going to be called Win7x86 that's for the 32 bit and I want to create another one which is called Win7x64 and that's for the 64 bit. Now again you can either use whatever you like, you can name these to whatever you like um, but the commands obviously will change but if they're like this you can just use the same commands that I'm putting in and I will put all those in the description for you. So the first thing we need to do is get our files from our Windows versions into these folders. Now you can use whatever you like, we'll do the uh, ISO image way first. So I've got my Windows 7 ISO image retail version, this is important that you use a complete untouched version of Windows, it doesn't want to be packed with any programs or anything like that, it needs to be just Windows from one of their sites, 30 day trial. And we're going to extract these files, right click on it and extract, I'm using 7-zip here, you can use pretty much what you like. I'm going to browse for that folder. I'm going to go down to my C root directory and I'm going to select my actual folder, which it is, 64-bit. And then click OK and that's going to extract that all into there, OK? OK, that's now installed into there, or extracted I should say. And if we go to our folder here, you'll see all our Windows files are inside there. Now what happens if you've only got a CD? Well if you've got a CD, I'm going to go to my 32-bit folder, and I'm going to open up another window here, and you can see I've got my uh, CD here. I'm going to open this up. And what we're going to do here is highlight all of these. I'm just going to pull that to the side and I'm just going to drag all these into that location. Now this is a bit slower because it's coming off of a CD, but it works just as well. Okay, so that's all now transferred across. As you can see, we've got our two folders with both our operating systems in there, 64-bit and 32-bit versions. OK, so the next thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to use Ximage. Now you can either install Wake itself, which is about 2 gigs in size, or you can just use the Ximage RIP, which is just like the little version that's been pulled out of it, and use that. But you're going to need to make sure either you're using 32-bit or 64-bit versions. Now it's a 64-bit machine, so I'm going to be using the 64-bit uh, version, and I'm just going to paste this into my C root directory. Now that folder is AMD64, and that's what it comes down like. Now once you've done that, we need to locate ourselves to this folder so we can run our Ximage program. We can do that in the command prompt, so what I'm going to do here Let's go to our start or all button, type CMD. I'm going to right click and run this as administrator. 
Okay, so now we've got this window open. What we need to do here is locate our AMD64 folder or whatever your folder is called. So I'm going to change directory. I'm going to go back to my C root directory here and then change directory to 64. So now we're in our AMD64 folder. So the next thing I'll do, let me just clear the screen there. Okay. So the first thing we need to do now is export those files from one folder to the other. So we've now got the 64 bit into the 32 bit. Okay, so what we need to do now is uh, do our commands. And I'm going to paste mine in for quickness. Um, but what it, I'll explain what it does. We've navigated to our AMD 64 bit folder and uh, we're running our uh, ImageX program and we're asking it to do maximum compression and we're asking it to export our uh, Windows 7 64 bit sources install.wim file and we're asking it to put it in this location Windows 7 uh, x86 which is the 32 bit sources install.wim and it's going to be called Windows Home Basic so that's what we're asking it to basically do and we're going to push enter here and you'll see it starting to transfer across that one's complete and now we need to do our next one which will be our Windows Home Premium and that one is now complete and we need to do our professional version I'm going to paste that one in and that one's now gone across and we just need Windows Ultimate I'm just going to paste that one straight in as well okay so we've finished that part now we can now close this off so we've got one more bit we need to do is go to our C root directory again and remember all our files now have transferred into our Windows 7 86 so we need to go in there go into sources and then what we need to do is come down and look for this file here ei.config and we need to delete that file say yes to that that's now gone so we're pretty much ready to make our ISO image now from this Win786 now remember all the files have come across from the 64 bit to our um, 86 folder which is our 32 bit so let's uh, create our uh, ISO image and we're going to need uh, image burn for this one So let's fire up image burn. First thing we need to do is create an image uh, from from files and folders. We need our source folder, and uh, we're going to go to here. Going to go to our area from our source folder, which is in our C root directory and again we want the Win786 select that I want to come over to the advanced tab here and then on the uh, boot disk we need to make this image bootable I want to change the sectors to load to 8 so we need to go to boot image here I'm going to go right through this process so you can see it we're going to go to our computer C root directory can I come down to our win 7 times 86 folder into the boot folder and we want to select this ETF s boot.com open that okay one well, next thing we need to do is go to options make sure this is set file system is set to UDF and it should look like this. I'm going to go to label here and now we can put our label in. I'm going to type universal installer 
you can call yours whatever you like but that's what mine's going to be called and then what I want to do here is just make sure everything's okay we're going to come down to this uh, build button now and click build just needs a location where to go I'm going to stick mine on my desktop and it's set to ISO and then save say OK to this and that will start to build OK that's uh, successfully completed click OK we can close this off now so there is our Windows 7 Universal Installer and as you can see the size of it is 3.66 gigabytes and let's just fire this up in a virtual box to show you what the installer will look like okay so let's uh, push the enter key so I'm going to go next here I'm going to go to install and there you have it we have all our flavors that we want to install 32-bit and 64-bit versions from start uh, from starter to ultimate and that's pretty much that one done and dusted now what happens if you just want to use uh, the starter to ultimate on a 32-bit and you don't want the 64-bit to integrate well you don't have to go through all that palaver you can use a little tool and I'll show you what that one does so let me just come out of here okay so if you just want to use the EFI config removal utility which is a very useful program which you can get on the internet and I will put the link in the description for you well basically what this does is it will remove the EFI config from the actual ISO image now it won't do it on a CD it will just do it on an ISO so here is the actual program here itself so let's fire this up okay this is all fired up and what I'm going to do is go to my desktop and then locate the actual ISO image what I want to do and remove the EFI.config and it says EFI.config removed means you don't have to mess around with the ISO at all now let's just boot up this ISO and see what it looks like now that was a uh, the actual 64-bit version okay gonna to boot to the CD go next here then install and there you have it what it's done is it's removed that for you and it gives you the starter home basic premium and uh, professional and ultimate and it's only the 32 bit so if you did that for each version of Windows i.e. 32 bit and 64 bit you can have two CDs and you can have them for 32 bit and 64 bit but the other way was actually putting them both together and having them on one disk so whatever really floats your boat really whatever simple uh, way you want to do it there's both ways you can either give them a try and let me know what you think in the comments below and I'll do my best to make more videos like this if you want them so as you can see there we've got the uh, starter right up to uh, ultimate on the 30 boot foot and as you can see there we've got the starter version right up to ultimate on the 32-bit version and you just have to repeat that process uh, with the remover tool of EFI And as you can see there, we've got the Windows 7 starter right up to ultimate versions on the 32-bit version there. And you just have to repeat that process if you wanted to on the 64-bit version and burn those two ISO images to CDs and have two separate CDs, one for 32-bit, one for 64-bit. And that's if you didn't want all that palaver of exporting them into each other and making one CD. It's just up to you which way you want to go about it, but it's possible. Okay, so I hope you enjoy these videos. I'm going to shut this off.
I think that's about it for this video. I will put all the links in the description for you, and uh, you can download those at your leisure, and uh, have good fun making your own CDs. So I hope this video helps you out. My name is Brian from brightsetcomputers.co.uk. If you enjoy these videos, hit that subscribe button, guys. Also rate and favorite me videos if you enjoy them. And I'll be making more useful videos again in the future. So thanks again for watching, guys, and thanks for your support. Bye for now.